Okay, how you doing there? Uh, you're cooking with Dennis. We're having a lot of fun. Uh, have you ever had one of those times when you're getting ready for the holiday season and you, you really want to cook something uh, that's different, but uh, that's still a traditional uh, holiday dish? Well, I personally like ham. My, uh, my, uh, all of my ancestors grew up as pig farmers in Arkansas, and so uh, basically we love ham. And uh, I like these spiral cut hams, and what we're going to do today is we're going to barbecue this sucker. It's already pre-cooked, so you don't have to worry about that. A little rule of thumb there is uh, you get it on the barbecue. We're going to wrap this up in tin foil here. Uh, aluminum foil, excuse me, don't call it tin foil anymore. Uh, we're going to get it all wrapped up so that it doesn't leak. Now this is the fixins. Now I personally do not use the fixin. This is the sugar and the, you know, that kind of stuff because I hate spoiling the wonderful taste of ham by putting this junk on it. So I take this and you know what I do with it? I deep six it. It goes in the rubbish and I just throw it all away. However, when you do yours, you do it the way you want it. You pay for it, you do what you want. And so we start picking our, pulling this up and part of the things you need to know is, of course that part I threw away, I'm going to need that, is we're going to cook it for about 10 minutes per pound. About 10 minutes per pound on the barbecue. We've already, so this tucker is 9.3 pounds. So we're going to cook this for 90 minutes. The math is simple. Uh, again, it's already a pre-cooked ham, and so we really don't have to worry about uh, it too much. The thing that it makes it a little bit challenging is the height of the ham. If it's too high, too tall, your barbecue lid won't fit down on top of it. I use a little small Weber kettle, and I want that to fit down inside. So one of the things I do when I'm barbecuing it is I'll take the grill, the, uh, of the grill off itself and so it's just basically sitting right down in the coals and uh, we'll show you more about that later. We'll be right back after we get this pig wrapped in the tin hey, foil. Hey everybody, this is Dennis. So here's the briquettes I'm going to be utilizing to cook my pig. Cook my, um, so just grab a bunch of this, walk back out to the, yeah, I don't know if I'll shoot it right there or do it over here. Um, to be polite to the neighbors, I think I'll move the this back over here. But I get all my utensils out. I get my a little bit of this, a little bit of that. There we go. I don't know if you guys know it, but they've been doing this environmental neutral uh, stuff, and it doesn't light worth a crap. Anyway, but that's another story. So anyway, this is what I love to you, Kingsford, the best. More later. Okay. I think I can do that without cutting my head off. Here I am down here. Um, anyway, what we're doing is uh, we're on uh, quarantine. So we decided we'd do a little bit of barbecue. What am I going to barbecue today? I'm going to barbecue. I'm going to barbecue spiral cut ham. Uh, it's already pre cooked, but what we do by barbecuing it gives us some additional flavor that's absolutely phenomenal, fantastic. If you've never done this, you need to give it a go because it's a lot of one. It's a lot of fun. It's simple. And during those holiday periods like Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, where you want to do, you don't want to do a turkey, but you want to have some really good meat, is uh, doing a spiral cut ham. By barbecuing it, guess what you get to do? You keep the the uh, kitchen cool. In Hawaii, that's really important. So what I do is I do not put the grate on barbecue or why is that because the pig or the, the pork that we're going to be cooking is fairly tall so we're going to lay it right down on top of the uh, charcoals you'll see how that will make a little hole for the charcoals but we have first have to get the charcoal burning so I want to add plenty of charcoals in here lots and lots and lots of charcoals you almost can't get too many charcoals I mean, you can if you like fill it over the top, but you can't get too many. So it takes care of that. Give you an idea of approximately. I think I use a small uh, Weber kettle. Get this down here a little bit closer. 
That way you can see how much it is without tipping over. There you go. And now we just basically gas it or uh, put the lighter fluid on it. And then we'll be ready to let this cook off. And uh, while I'm, while I'm uh, letting this get ready to go, I will then go prepare the ham itself. And so I get that kind of put into a pyramid type of thing. Take a little bit of the lighter fluid, the go juice here. I don't know if you can hear my cat in the background. Lasha is so happy we're home. But gosh, he's just crying all the time. There we go. I think that's enough. Okay, if it goes poof and I just singe my eyebrows, you know I got too much lighter fluid on this puppy. Let's see, where's my lighter? Right here. Let's see if we can get it going. It didn't go poof, so we're in good shape. I don't know how you like to do it, but I like to get my charcoals about a half hour, 20 minutes to a half hour before I do uh, anything else. But I want to stand away from the fire, so see that because that's really hot. So now let's go get that pig ready. Okay, we're right back at you. Um, we've got the. No, uh... we don't. Okay, uh, my wife was just telling me that I have no more tin foil, so I've got to make this last. We'll see. <laughs> Hopefully that goes okay. And remember, why are we doing this? We're doing this because. The state of Hawaii has this lockdown for a uh, uh, for the uh, quarantine for 10 days, and so this is day four. I got bored, and so I'm cooking a pig. Anyway, I've cut off the plastic, as you can see. One of the things you really, I don't have to do anything to prepare the meat. It's already ready to rock and roll. I go ahead and pull off the rest of the plastic. There's one little piece you want to make sure that you do not forget, and that's right here on the bottom of the pig. There's a little plastic, little plastic um, stop, if you will, that covers the bone with all that good bone marrow that will basically be put into the ham. So now I'm going to take this and I'm just going to plop it into the middle of the section. Again, we're hoping that if by chance this is too tall, I will have to cut it down. But I, I'm, I'm already kind of pre-measured. I know the size of my barbecue. It should be okay. We'll find out, won't we? <laughs> so what I do now is I just kind of wrap it up on this first go around. I pull up my sides, and I'm going to put in two wraps. I'm going to wrap it this way. There we go. That takes care of that. Then I'm going to stretch out about the same amount. I may be able to do this first piece that I worked up. Because I'm going to want to open up the top when I get into the, to let the smoke. That's what we're trying to capture. We're trying to capture the smoke from the rest of the, from the barbecue. That gives you that nice smoky flavor to the, uh, to the pork. And it's just absolutely awesome. So there we go. Smash that down. Voila! The pig is ready. Okay, as you can see, we're back outside now. And as you can, uh, the charcoals have just about turned white all the way around. And so we can adjust that. But what I need to do now is I need to make a hole in the middle of the charcoal that we're going to put the, uh, the pig into, the, 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 the uh, pork. And so what I do is I, you know, I would say don't try this at home. But if you don't try it at home, you'll never get to barbecue it. So do try it at home. But be careful. I'm putting on my leather gloves because those charcoals are hot. Then I just use my regular charcoal or my regular barbecue utensils to start digging a hole in the middle. And I just scoot the, I just scoot everything to the side. I will adjust. I will adjust the. Um, I will adjust the um, air holes on the bottom. Uh, by rearranging so we get a, 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 a good burn all the way around. This is turning up really good. It's all white. It's turning white. And there we go. Oh, and it's getting hot. It's getting hot on that glove. And I'm reaching down in there, and that stays hot for a little bit with that leather. This is strong leather, old leather. 
Kind of like me, kind of old and leathery. <laughs> Michelle absolutely loves this. We did this for our next door neighbors um, this year for Thanksgiving. We all loved it. So basically that is now uh, done. Hopefully I've got enough of that. Uh, and so now comes the test that we've been waiting for. Will the shoulder of pork, will the shoulder of pork fit down in here deep enough so that, that uh, the lid will cover it up. So here we go. This is the fun part. Again, you need leather gloves on this. If you have even, um, uh, it's not asbestos gloves, but fire, fireproof gloves, that's even something better to use. Drop it in there. I can tell you right now, I know that that's gonna fit. That's gonna fit well. And basically, that's it. Now I take my lid, I put it on top. Does it fit? Do I have a fairly good seal all the way around? The answer to that is yes, I do. And now, when are we going to come back? We're going to come back. We're going to set a timer for 90 seconds, 90 seconds, 90 minutes, and come back and check on the, uh, the pork. Mmm. The other thing I just want to double check on, you can see that's before it gets too far along, I want to make sure I open that up. So I'm doing that. I'm opening that up. <coughs> let the smoke get into the pork to the maximum extent possible. I take the lid, take the lid, put it back on, and I am going to whip around. There we go. We're sealed all the way around. We're looking good. I'm going to turn this back around just a little bit. There we go. So we can get the flame over on the other side. It really doesn't matter how level it is. My, my driveway is a little bit uh, tilted one side, it will cook just fine. So until 90 minutes from now, we are done. Hey okay, guys, <clears throat> 90 minutes has gone by. It's almost gone by, not quite yet. And we're gonna see, this smells delicious. Mmm, you can hear the, the juices boiling down in there. See if I can get close enough for you to be able to see what we're looking at. See that basically it's all done. Hopefully that turns out. See the bone showing up here? Nice, full of juice. This juice has been boiling off fairly well. And so that's what we've got going on. Now we go back and we, again, want to pick up our, our gloves because you know what? It's going to be hotter than a pistol. And what we'll do is we'll basically have your platter already ready. So you can just set it right on top of the platter. Be really careful with it while it's been wrapped really well in the aluminum foil or tin foil, whatever you want to call it. Um, we don't want to spill any of those juices, primarily because they're really oily and really greasy. So I just go in here and I grab the, grab the pig. Oh, it's feeling really good. And I just come up here and I drop it right on top of the platter. We'll take that over here and show it to you. Here's what it looks like. It's all on the platter. And we'll now we'll head on into the house to uh, let it sit for a while. I like to let it sit. Here, let's see if I can tilt this up. <laughs> there we go. I like to let it sit for eh, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Let it, uh, uh, after we've taken it off, I'll close it down. Uh, but also, I gotta taste it. I gotta see what it's gonna uh, taste like. So anyway. See you in the inside. Okay, everybody. We are now inside again, as you can see. And I just started unwrapping this. I haven't actually let it set because I want to get a taste of it, make sure it's looking pretty good. And from what it smells like, it just smells absolutely wonderful. Let me show you what we're looking at. As you can see, in some of these cases, it almost looks like the, the, the meat is falling off the bone. But I want to grab a little piece of that meat and oh trust me it is hotter than a pistol i don't know how how hot is a pistol anyway why do they say that what do they say hotter than a pistol i don't know i think it's from fire in it so anyway got a little piece mmm mmm oh no or as we like to say in california muy bueno anyway good tasting pig 
that barbecue flavor gets down into it and it tastes absolutely phenomenal. So now I'll just basically wrap this back up, let it sit until uh, the rest of the dishes are done or the rest of, you know, one of the courses we're having is done. And this is ready to go. Uh, once it has been done, like I can actually cut it off the bone, freeze it, put it aside. And again, love it. Um, Okay, well, we're back here. Uh, the, the, we let the meat set for a while, and now it's time to do the, the unveiling, the reveal. See how things are taken up. As you can see here, nice burn on the bottom. Looking pretty good. Now, what I do is I poke holes in the bottom of it to let the juices run out, so when, I'm, when I uh, open it up, I'm not surprised by a bunch of juices. And as you can see, I'm doing it right close to the sink because I don't want to make a mess. It's not messy enough anyway. And all the ju most of the juices have run off. And as you can see, this is almost, eh, not almost, it's cooked to perfection. I'll see the nice slices there. And it basically is fall off the bone ready. And so what I do now is take the cat hair off the, the meat. Taste it again. Tastes really good. Mm. Oh my goodness. There's a couple of ways of doing this. We're going to locate the bone. And I just want to start then cutting, cutting basically the slices away. Uh, if you can cut all the way to the bone and kind of fillet it, that's one way of doing it. I'm a little bit more messy than that. What else is new? There we go. And what I'll do is I'll just cut in here until I get down to about the bone. So let's see if I can get this a little bit closer. And we'll tip it down just a bit, bit so you can see what I'm doing here. Here's the bone. I want to cut all the way down to the bone on the first cut. So then that releases all of this meat here. I can just cut right around the bone. Cut right around the bone. And I'll take, I'm using a fairly flexible knife. And as you can see, when you get further up into the, I don't want to do this way, cut my finger off. But as you get further up into the joint there from the shoulder, then it kind of spreads out and does other stuff. So I just cut this away, cut this away. And you can see it's falling away from the bone very nicely. Cut off the bottom. Lay that out. Absolutely phenomenal. And Michelle says she's going to... And as you see, there's a couple of different bones here. It would be nice. It's still hot in the inside. It's been sitting for, gosh, almost an hour. It is still really hot. And you just do it like if you're flaying a fish, basically. Cut it away from the bone. Those small pieces like that work really good for the kids. And here's a piece of bone here. And of course, we of course save the bones. Why do we save the bones? So we can make beans and ham, which is really good. So I'll, I'll basically just throw that aside. Michelle will freeze that, make, uh, make some beans a little bit later on. And you can see that whole chunk of meat now all sliced is ready to go on your serving platter. Now, of course, if you are doing this like I'm doing it, where it's just going to be Michelle and I eating it uh, today, I will basically will freeze a lot of that. Now, when they do the spiral cut, they only cut up to about, eh, they leave about, oh, not quite a fourth of the, of the, of the uh, meat has not been sliced, but that makes really good chunks of ham. So I'll go ahead and just cut the rest of this off. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. Lay it aside. Then again, since the slicer doesn't take it all the way down to the bone, the rest of that meat just is really nice bone. And that shoulder just, I guess it's a shoulder or just comes right off. Again, this can either be used for you know, you can slice that up on your own, this chunk here, nice big chunk, or go into your next dish also if you need a little bit. And then you want to be very careful 
doing the rest of the around that shoulder because you never know where that bone is and where the tendons and all that kind of stuff are. And so that's about as much as I want to take off of this. Ah! These Cutco knives work so nicely. There we go. And so, yeah, I think the rest of that is set pretty good. And uh, our cat, LaShaw, just absolutely loves, loves uh, ham. And so what happens is when I do ham, he likes to come around and go, Dad, where's the ham? Where is there he is. Hey, LaShaw. Say hi. Hey, Lucia. Lucia. Say hi. Yeah, see, he's wanting some of that ham. He loves ham. And so I'll cut him up a little bit here. So basically, I'm done with this piece now. And again, I can cut off a little bit or just leave. There's still a lot of meat there around the bone. But again, it's, 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 uh, that meat can go in to make a really nice uh, soup. And I think I'm just about done with that. So, hey, we'll be, we'll be putting this up on the, uh, uh, the plate as soon as the salads are done. And then it's time to chow down. Aloha. God bless everybody. Woo! -hoo!